Enthalpy of combustion is one of three enthalpy changes you're expected to know in detail in the higher course. The others are enthalpy of solution and enthalpy of neutralization. Well, as the term implies, we're burning something here. Enthalpy of combustion is the energy that's produced when one mole of a substance burns. Let's take, for example, ethanol, C2H5OH, one mole of ethanol. Now that's a lot of material. One mole of ethanol has a mass of 46 grams. If you were to burn one mole of ethanol, and when it burns, of course, the carbon joins with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, and the hydrogen joins with oxygen to form water, let's just write a balance equation, it's good practice, We've got two carbons to begin with, got two in there. We've got six hydrogens at the start, we need to end up with six hydrogens. There are four oxygens in here, and there are three oxygens there, that's a total of seven oxygens. We must have started with seven oxygens, there's one of them, there's the other six. Well, if you wanted to produce the enthalpy of combustion, you'd have to burn one mole of ethanol, and you'd have to burn it in oxygen, not in air. Because if you were to burn it in air, it wouldn't really burn all that efficiently and you wouldn't get as much heat as you would get when you burn it in oxygen. This raises the question, how could you actually find the value for this reaction? What you could do is you could get yourself a little burner, a little container which allows you to burn the ethanol. Let's say we put some ethanol in this container and set fire to it, set fire to the the wick on the burner. The problem here is the heat being produced is being lost. We need some way of gathering the heat, some way of capturing the heat and seeing how much heat is being produced. And that's why in these experiments you heat up a liquid. Now we always heat up water. We could heat up something else. We could heat up petrol. It's very dangerous. We could heat cooking oil. But water is the liquid that we decide to heat. And because water is the liquid we're heating and not some other random liquid, we have to use what's called the specific heat capacity of water. You'll find a value for this on the last page of the data book. You don't need to memorize the value. It's in here, properties of water, specifically 4.18. You don't need to worry about the units. So we're using this number because it's water we're heating. If you did this experiment, what measurements would you have to take? Well, you need to know the quantity of water. Let's say you measure out 100 cubic centimetres of water. The problem here is, it's not the volume of water we need to know, it's the mass of water. Now 100 cubic centimetres of water is 100 grams of water. And that in turn is 0.1 of a kilogram. And that's how we express the quantity of liquid. We'd also have to know how much hotter the water gets. This would require a thermometer. Let's say, for example, the initial temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. We need to see how much hotter the water becomes in the course of this reaction. We might want to put some sort of shield here to prevent drafts. We would probably want to have some sort of insulated container because the biggest problem in these experiments is heat loss. A lot of the heat is lost to the surroundings. It doesn't just heat the water, it heats lots of other things as well. We would also need to know how much ethanol was burned in this experiment. We could burn 40 grams of ethanol, but A, that would take a very long time, B, it would be rather expensive, and C, well, it would, it would, we need far, far more water because this is only capable of using up a very small quantity of alcohol. So let's suppose that at the start of the experiment, the burner weighs 10 grams. And after burning it for a short time, you stop the burning, you blow out the flame, and it now weighs, let's say, for example, it now weighs, let's see what we've got here, 9.5 grams. Then it follows that 0.5 grams of ethanol was burned. And let's also assume that when this 0.5 grams of ethanol was burned, the temperature went up from an initial 20 degrees to a final temperature of, say, 50 degrees. 
Is it possible to calculate how much heat was produced by the 0.5 grams of ethanol to raise the temperature of the water by 30 degrees? Well, yes, we use a formula. And the formula says that the energy produced can be calculated if we know three values. Now, the important point here is that these three values all refer to the water. This is the specific heat of the water, the number we must use because it's water we're heating. This is the mass of water. How much was it again? 100 cubic centimetres, 100 grams, 0.1 of a kilogram. And finally, this is the temperature rise of the water. The water temperature went up by 30 degrees. Water, water, water. If we do this simple sum, we can see how much energy is produced in burning this small quantity of ethanol. And it comes to 12.54 kilojoules. That's all very well, but we, what we want to know is how much heat would have been produced if we burned a mole of ethanol rather than just 0.5 of a gram. But we can scale this up. What we're really saying is that when 0.5 of a gram of ethanol burned, we've got this amount of heat. What we want to know is if we were to burn 46 grams of ethanol, which is one mole, how much heat would that produce? The answer, of course, is a great deal more. We need to magnify this value, we need to scale it up. So I, my suggestion is, you realise you want a larger number than 12.54, and you use these numbers to magnify 12.54, putting the larger number on top and the smaller number below. Again, if you do this simple calculation, you can work out how much energy would have been produced if 46 grams of ethanol had been burned. And it comes to 1153. Now it's time to start thinking about symbols and units. We're still talking about kilojoules, but this time we can talk about kilojoules per mole. Because now we are burning a mole of ethanol. And secondly, this is burning. Heat is given out. It's an exothermic reaction. It's important that we put in the negative symbol to imply it is exothermic. Finally, how does that value compare with the value in the data book? Well, you'll find the entropies of combustion on page 9 of the data book. And it tells us here that when one mole of ethanol burns under ideal conditions, under standard conditions, the energy produced should be minus 1367 kilojoules per mole. So why the difference? Well, as we said, the value in the data book will have been done under ideal conditions using pure oxygen and avoiding any heat loss. Our experiment used poor equipment and probably was burned in air. So the reason why the value quoted in the data book is higher is because in our experiment there was heat loss and something else, incomplete combustion. Because we're not burning our fuel in pure oxygen, it won't burn thoroughly and the combustion is incomplete, incomplete combustion. There we have it, entropy of combustion.